Hi everybody, it's Sarah Cray with Let's Make Art and we like to paint every week. We do a brand new project, we break it down into steps, and then that way, wherever you are on your watercolor journey, you can follow along. So if you're a beginner, you can do this. If you're intermediate, you can do this. If you're advanced, you can totally do this. So, uh, I'm Sarah Cray. Did I say that? I can't remember. <laughs> I can't either. Either way, my name is Sarah. Keenan is running cameras, so he will be talking to me and telling me where to look and all of that jazz. Also coming in with some fun facts, if uh, I request I them. Sure try. <laughs> uh, this week we are painting this project. It's called Rainbow Wish, because it's rainbowed. And then it's a dandelion. And you know, you make wishes. You know, you see what I'm saying they there? They always come true. <laughs> they do. So, super fun project. There is no outline for this project, so we're freehanding it. That might sound really scary to you. It's not, you guys. You can do this. Don't think of it as drawing. Just think of it as like making marks on a page. Less intimidating, right? Yeah, like we that. are using three colors for this project. We have deep blue. We have lemon yellow. We have fuchsia. So just three. And uh, we do have a lot of colors in here and you might be like, how can we do all of that with just three colors? Well, we mix. We mix the colors to make the greens and the oranges. That's pretty much all we're mixing. And the dark blue. <laughs> we are using two brushes for this, a round two and a round six. Rounds are my favorite. Um, you can do a thick and thin brush stroke in the same stroke. Versatile, that's why I like these, you know what I mean? Steps, we have five steps for this project. <laughs> Step number one is the, I called it the bones, that's not the right word, but basically what I'm saying is, is we're gonna do like the base, like the structure of it, okay, step one. Step two, we are going to do the rainbow water thing. Step three, we're gonna do our stem. Step four, we're gonna do the splatters and the little seeds flying away. And step five, as always. Details. Details, that's right. Good job, Keenan. Thank you. Nailed it. Okay, so we are going to start with our base. Now, the very first step in making our base is we are gonna do this little lip right here, just this curved line. Now, something I want you guys to keep in mind is and this is usually true for many things you're painting, which is why I'm mentioning it. You want to pay attention a little bit to where you're putting your painting on the paper, where you're starting it. Now, usually compositionally, because this is turned slightly to the left, you would actually, and I didn't do a very good job on this original one, which is why I'm gonna mention it here. I would actually wanna start it a little more to the right. Since it's opening to the left, we actually want to have more paper on the left-hand side than on the right-hand side. And this is especially true when you're drawing um, animals or people, whatever way they're facing, you want to have more of the paper in front of them than behind them. If, if they're facing one way and there's only like this much paper here and then there's like the entire paper behind them, it's gonna feel really funky. You're gonna look at that and you're gonna be like, I don't know why, but that makes me feel uncomfortable. That's why. You, because if they're looking at it, you wanna see something. Unless you're intentionally breaking that rule, then do whatever you want, but just keep that in mind. So, we're gonna start. So I'm gonna start doing my little lip. And to get this like dark blue color, I'm taking the deep blue, I'm grabbing a little bit of the fuchsia, and I'm picking up some of that yellow. And so I'm gonna get this like kind of muddy blue purpley color. Yeah, kind of like grayish, bluish. Navy, I don't know, many colors going on. Okay, so I'm gonna do this lip. So I'm gonna start it kind of a little bit more on the right hand side since it's opening up. And it's gonna be a curved line, kind of like the bottom of a lip if you were to do a mouth. You know how you do like the doot doot and then doot? It's just the bottom lip part. So it's just gonna be like that. And you can make this as big as you want. 
just keep in mind that the rainbow water is going to go around it so you don't want to make it like this big because then the rainbow water will go off the page so step one we're putting in this got my nice little lip now if you don't do it perfectly in one brush stroke don't stress out you can play with it after you put it down maybe you want to curve it a little bit more maybe you want to thicken it up a little bit more Okay, so we're gonna start putting in our dandelion stems now, or the seed stems. Now, one thing I want you to keep in mind when you're doing this is I want you to look at the direction um, in the reference. You see how these lines, they even, like look at the angles. They go, angle, 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 angle. So they, they are switching the angle of the stems as it's going across this lip. And the reason why it's doing that is because this is a three-dimensional object, right? So if I were to just make these stems go up and down, then that would make it seem like there's only fuzz right here on the top. But because there's going to be fuzz all around, like you know a dandelion is like a ball of yeah. fuzz, then it's gonna go all the way around it. So, I, I just got really out of breath explaining that, and I'm not sure why. <laughs> <laughs> so when I'm, doing, when I'm doing my thin lines, I wanna make sure that I have enough paint on my brush to make a thin line, but not so much that it, it fills my bristles to where I can't make a thin line because there's so much paint and water on it. So what I like to do is I'll pick up paint and then I'll swoosh my paintbrush back and forth on the tray and that is going to get rid of excess paint and water and also kind of make my brush go to, it like will flatten it to a point even more than it already is. And now I'm gonna start doing my uh, lines. So it's gonna be like there, 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 there. So you see how the angles are changing? Okay. Now the other thing I want you to keep in mind is this whole thing, you kind of have to imagine the other side of this lip that we haven't painted yet. So these lines are all starting at different points. As long as they're like in this oval shape, that's fine. We don't want them all to be on the same line. We want them to come in at different times because again, the seeds are going around this thing. So they're gonna be not lined up perfectly from an angle. So this, and if it's easier for you to switch your paper while you're doing these lines, do that. Again, remember these are different lengths. Um, that's okay, they're starting at different points. Don't, don't do like a perfect line all the way across because that's just not how we would see it true in nature. Now the other thing I want you to do, we're gonna do another layer, but I'm gonna add a little bit of water to it to make my lines a little bit lighter. And the reason for that is because I know in other videos we talked about atmospheric perspective and it is also true on a small scale. So atmospheric perspective, basically what that means is if something is farther away, then it's going to be a little bit lighter in color uh, or in value, sorry, lighter in value and not as um, contrasty. So it kind of like has an even value and a lighter value. So in landscapes, if you look at like the farthest mountain, that one is gonna be a little bit lighter. That one's gonna be not as, you know, dark and light, more even toned. It's the same thing here. So the ones that are dark, the little streaks that are dark, those are gonna be the ones that are in the front. And the ones that are lighter are gonna automatically push back visually because they're lighter. This is looking really spiky. You might be like, how is this gonna turn into a soft dandelion? It will, okay? Just trust me, just trust me. So I put in my spikes. You can always add more or adjust it later. That will be a step for the details. Now I'm gonna put in a little bit of like petals or like, yeah. Wait, do you know anything about dandelions? <laughs> Keenan. I know nothing about I just, I know that they have, I feel like they're the yellow flower and then do they turn into the seeds? Yeah. Oh, so you do know something about yeah. dandelions. Well, I, I mean, two things about dandelions. <laughs> so this right here, these are leftover petals from when it was a flower and also like the bottom part of the flower, they have like those green like leaves. Do you know, can you visualize what I'm talking about? I can totally visualize what you're talking about. 
that's what we're painting right here. And here's a beautiful thing with the rounds. This is why I love them. This is why hopefully you will love them too, is I'm still gonna use my two. I'm gonna start off soft. I'm gonna press hard and then lighten up. And now I have this nice curvy kind of petal. Just like that. And I'm gonna do a couple of them. They're gonna kind of overlap. Let's do one coming out this way. Now, um, controlling your pressure when you're painting with a paintbrush, that's actually pretty difficult. So if you try that and it's just not working for you, don't get mad, let it go. Don't be mad about it, just, just draw it then. So I would just um, kind of draw the shape of this and then fill it in. So basically, don't stress out is what I'm saying to you. And also these are like, I don't know. It's not a big deal if these are kind of funky, wonky shaped because they're like leftover dead petals pretty much, right? They're gonna wither. They're seeds. They're seeds. Well, this part here. Does this, is that the part oh, that turns yeah, into that's the? Just a withered petal, that's just a withered petal, yeah. You're right. Thank you. Thanks, Keenan. Okay, so just do a couple of those. I'm just doing them on the bottom because I don't want them to take away from this part at the top. And then what I'm going to do is move on to step two. That was step one. That was step one. We did it. We put in our, our structure. Now we are going to move to the rainbow water step two. Now you might notice, and you might be really proud of me, that I have two cups of water here. And this one I managed to keep fairly clean thank you very much. You're going to want clean water for this part because what we're going to do is we are going to drop in water and then we're going to drop in color into the water that we put down. So, gosh, am I talking really fast? Because I just feel out of breath for everything. Hopefully you're not getting sick. I, I just feel, I feel like after every sentence I have to be like, <gasps> What are you eating today? Are you hungry? I had a kombucha because my stomach felt upset so I thought gut health maybe would help. I don't know what a kombucha is. It's like fermented juice pretty much. Like it would be bad for your stomach. No it's good for it. Fermented I don't know juice. why. Is that code for <laughs> you're like fermented juice is wine. Did you have I mean, wine for breakfast? <laughs> Okay, back to this. I hope you leave that in because that was really funny. <laughs> okay, so I'm just gonna take my water and I'm just gonna start putting water in kind of where the stems are. Now, when I'm putting my water in, I'm kind of just doing these curved lines here. And I'm just gonna do it a little section at a time because I still want it to be wet. And then I'm just gonna drop in color and it's just going to spread and do its own thing and get kind of funky and cool. And if it's not spreading as much as you would like, what you can do is you can just help it. You can be like, come on, little guy, fill in these spaces. But personally, I love the variation between dark sections and light sections. So don't feel like you have to kind of work it back and forth to where it's totally even. You are free to do that because it's your painting but I think variation in value is what brings visual interest to a painting. So don't feel obligated to do that. You gotta just like drop it in and then like let go, move on. So that was just my fuchsia. Now I'm going to grab some fuchsia and mix it with my, a little bit of the deep blue. And that's gonna give me like this really gorgeous purple color. If you want your purple color to be more pink, you're gonna add more of the fuchsia. If you want your purple to color to be more blue, you're gonna add more of the blue. And then same thing, I'm gonna drop in water. And I'm touching this part. So yes, some pink is gonna lead into there, bleed in, that's okay. Don't get mad. It's just water doing its thing and it's cool. So there's some purple. And then we're going to transition over to blue. Now there's two ways that you can do it. You can start with your water and then dropping in color, or you can start with just color, 
So here's me just using just color, and then you can add water to it later. So I'm just using water to spread it out. There's no really right or wrong, whatever feels better for you. Now I want the transition from my blue and pink to be a little bit smoother and not as drastic. So I'm gonna put a little bit more purple in between here. And I'm just doing kind of drops of strong color because again, I like the variation. Okay, now we're gonna move on to more of a green. So I'm gonna take my lemon yellow, I'm gonna grab a little bit of blue, and that's gonna turn into green. If you want more of a yellow green, you're gonna just add more yellow. Now we're gonna do the yellow part. This one I'm putting water down first. Now with lighter color, so yellow naturally is just a lighter value color, that's just how it is. So if you have very dirty paint water and you try and do water first, um, then there might be some residual color in here that might affect the yellow. So if that's happening to you, just rinse your water out, get some clean water, and then put your yellow in. Now mine didn't show up that dirty, so I'm just gonna leave it. There's my yellow. Then I'm gonna mix my yellow with a little bit of fuchsia to get this orange color. And I'm gonna do my orange. Now the marks that I'm making on this, they're not full on, like I'm not holding my paintbrush down and doing this. I'm kind of just doing these kind of curved lines, like so. So there are white spaces in between some of these curved lines. And that is because there are tons of little seeds and there's, and because there's so many and there are little sections, there's actually going to be white spaces in between those sections. So that's why I'm kind of leaving in some white here. So just kind of curve lines and then we're going to make it, turn it back to kind of more of a red. And then if you want like the full spectrum, you can go back to that fuchsia color. And then in the front here, uh, what I did is this one is really kind of more loose. I didn't, I didn't want to do crazy color right here because I didn't want it, the stem to get lost. So I kind of just used a little bit more water with my mixture and did more thicker, looser brush strokes. that are a little bit lighter in color. Now the other thing I kind of want you to keep in mind is I want you to kind of look at the shape you're creating with this rainbow water that you're putting in. For me, I just feel like the top of this is super even right here. And I want it to kind of be a little bit more uneven because um, some of the seeds are going to be taller and some of them are going to be shorter and I just think it's a little bit more fun. So I'm going to go in and just kind of slightly adjust some heights in here. And to just adjust heights, all you have to do is you're just going to be doing small kind of dashes that kind of like just go a little bit taller out than what's already there. I'll do some yellow here. You can even drop in color. What I've noticed a lot sometimes with watercolors, people do either two things. They either use not enough water so they don't allow the paint to be transparent, which is what it's supposed to be. You should see through some of that paint to the paper. Or they just don't use enough paint to where it's just all really, really light and they don't really have any strong dark values in there. So try and find a good balance between. Make sure that you're like, okay, I have some whites, I have some highlights, I have some light washes here, so this is a lighter value. And then I also have some strong areas where there's strong drops of color. And if that's scary to you, 
you just gotta like, you just gotta pretend it's not and just be like, piece of paper, you don't intimidate me. I'm just gonna drop in color right here and I'm just gonna let that spread and move and do its thing and let it go, let it do its thing. You could invite them to our uh, live because you do some good warm ups to help them with that. Yes, thank you, Keenan. You're welcome. If you're brand new to painting, uh, we do two tutorials for every single project. We do a pre-recorded, which is what you're watching right now. It's usually kind of more of a shortened to the point tutorial. And then in the lives, I spend a little bit more time going over warm-ups, going over techniques, that kind of thing. So if you see me doing stuff or talking about things and you're like, I have no idea what's going on, well then just tune in for the live. If you can't make it to the live, um, those videos we put available on YouTube and Facebook and our website. So you can just watch it later. Okay. There's my rainbow wash water thing. It's pretty cool, huh? That is cool. It's like a color, color wheel almost on my dandelion. Okay, we're moving on to step three. We're gonna do the stem. Now for the stem, what I want you to keep in mind is because this is angled, our stem is kind of kind of curve out to the right a little bit. If we did a stem straight up and down, I don't think it would match the angle of our dandelion. However, there's a bunch of like funky stuff in uh, nature, so who knows? Okay, I'm just going to use that same kind of dark blue that I used for the base, and I'm just gonna add water to it so it's kind of more of a light blue. And then just taking my six, I'm adding my stem. Like so. And I'm not having to go to the end, edge of the page. I don't know if you guys notice this about me. I like it when things just like float on paper. It's my personal choice. You don't have to follow it. If you want it to go all the way to the edge, do it. It is your painting. So. The reason why I'm leaving this light blue is because I kind of want to introduce some color into the stem. So I did my stem and I'm going to drop in some pink right here, rinse my brush, drop in a little bit of yellow and kind of some orange in the middle here. You can do whatever color combination you want on your stem and then I'm going to finish up the kind of base of my dandelion here. I'm just using that same light blue wash and I'm just going to finish this disc shape. So basically I'm just gonna do another curved line on the other side and then just fill it in. Just like that. And for fun, while it's still wet, I want you to take more of that deep blue and drop in some color. Because if you look at those things up close, they have like little dots from where the um, seeds are kind of sprouting out from. So there's gonna be some darker areas on there. This one got like really bushy. I like it. Okay. So that was step three. Now we're gonna do our splatters. This is the fun part, so. This is all the fun part. <laughs> that's true, Keenan. that's true. Okay, warning with splatters. They're really messy. So if you have a really nice computer right next to you, maybe push it off to the side during this part or, you know, just be aware. You have no idea how many times I have splattered paint onto my computer screen and my phones my nice camera, well, my husband's camera. And he's like, why is there paint splatters on this? And I'm like, ooh. <laughs> so I learn from me, okay, don't do that. So what you're going to do is you're gonna take your paper towel and hopefully you have a paper towel next to you because if you try and paint watercolor without paper towel, you're making it hard on yourself. Grab one of these. You are going to cover your dandelion, okay? And you are going to pick up your brush and you're gonna pick up some color. I'm gonna move things that I don't want splattered off of here. And just 
And you want to make sure there's a good amount of water on your paintbrush when you do this with your paint. And you're just going to hit your paintbrush against your finger and it will automatically start to splatter on your paper. Now, if you want bigger drops, what you can do is you just pick up a lot of water and you kind of just like, I don't know. I don't want to say make a stabbing motion. Stabbing. <laughs> it's like a, ugh. Here's Jenny. <laughs> And I'm going to do this with multiple colors. So the first one I started with was pink. I'm going to grab some yellow. Splatter. Do some big splatters. Okay, now let's do some blue. And if you want to do some of those colors we mix, like purple or orange, do it. And maybe you just want to do one of these colors. Well, it's your painting. I feel like it needs a little bit of orange. Okay, and then remove your paper towel. And then because the stem is so thin, we don't really have any marks over here. So if you can, I want you to do splatters here, but just kind of like do like soft ones. And the reason why I want you to cover this is because some of these are most likely still wet and because watercolor is transparent, if I were to get some blue or some strong pink over that yellow, then they would start to mix and maybe make colors that I don't really want them to make dirt on this rainbow wash. So just kind of be aware. I'll do some blue down here. These are just soft. Soft little ones. Isn't that fun? That looks so cool. It's so fun. Okay, now, my splatters are done. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna make little seeds coming off of our dandelion, you know, like the dandelion is going in the wind. You know, like in Beauty and the Beast, with yes. in Belle she's singing and it just like starts flying away. That's what we're painting. So. Are those dandelions? Yes. When she like, when she's like singing about how she wants more, and she picks up a fuzzy she's dandelion. On the hill. Yes, yes, she's on the hill, yeah. and then you see them start to float away. That's nice. If you can actually put a clip of that part of the movie in this spot right now, <laughs> actually, I don't think you can. I don't think that's legal. Don't do it. But if you have Beauty and the Beast, the illustrated one, not the newest one, yes. that's in there. Okay. Let's focus here, people. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna turn some of these splatters into these kind of wispy seeds that are floating away. So, and uh, I'm having them go all over. If you want them to go in a single direction, then just have them all kind of line up in a single direction, but I'm kind of having them go everywhere. And I'm like, you know what? This blue one looks like it can be a seed. So I'm just going to take a clean brush using the paint that's already there I'm just going to kind of spread it out. Just like that. And I'll do it with this pink one right here. And how about this yellow? And if you don't have enough color or they dry too much and they're not spreading out, well then just pick up some paint and add color to them. Okay, where else should I have some? I wanna have some coming off this way. So I'm gonna make one here. I picked up some blue and I'm gonna turn this one into one. And th these shapes that I'm making, they're kind of, um, they're not perfectly all alike, but they're similar to a petal shape, which is they're kind of narrow at the bottom and thick at the top. Let's do like this really soft purple one here. Let's do a darker purple one over here. We can have one coming down this way. And even these, like, 
even though these are lighter, don't be afraid if you like color, if you want to do a strong drop of color in there and just let it move and bleed in that water, do it. It's super fun. And it's kind of nice just letting the water and the color do the work for you. Honestly, I think it's why I like watercolor so much is because I feel like they have a mind of their own and they're gonna wanna do what they wanna do and you just gotta let them and then it's like, that's so cool. I didn't even mean to make that texture or that shape or that mark and it just happened and it looks pretty awesome. Doing a yellow one. Okay, you can do as much or as little of these as you want. Totally up to you. Give yourself some creative license to just play and now we're going to make the little like stem parts off of it so I'm switching to my round two I'm gonna grab this dark blue color that I've been using and I'm just going to do thin stems that connect to them and then to give it that little something extra you're gonna make the bottom of the stem a little bit thicker Now I just have that song that Belle sings in that part in my head. How does that go? I honestly can't remember that song. It's like... <laughs> no, I'm not going to sing. I'm, I'm not going to do it. I'm just trying to find the tune. Something about like world wonder. I want it more I than I can world. stand. No, that, don't get me that, confused. <laughs> Okay, we're gonna keep, keep on keeping on with our little stems here. Now, if your stems get a little bit thick, don't get mad, you guys. It's not a big deal. Just for the next one, if you did one and you're like, oh, that stem was too thick, whatever. Do a thinner one next time and nobody's gonna notice that one thick stem, you know what I mean? The nice thing is it's your painting, so you could be like, yeah, I wanted that stem to be thick there. And that's all you got to say. Now, are these what the fuzzies look like up close in real life? I don't know. <laughs> I just was like, this seems right. Okay, I feel like I need one more right here. Let's just turn that one. Oh, oh dear, oh dear, hold on, hold on, I got a muddy one. Just pick it up, Psst, problem solved. So here's the thing guys, when you are working with this many colors, sometimes if you put two colors together that are across from each other on the color wheel, they will turn to mud which is fine some people like muddy dandelions if that's what you want then do it um so just kind of be aware just try and choose colors if you're mixing choose colors that are next to each other on the color wheel and you might be like well what's a color wheel color wheels is just the red orange yellow green blue purple in a circle that's all it is so i feel like it needs yellow over here so I kind of mixed blue and purple and yellow together right here, which is why it turned a bit muddy. Okay. And then I'm gonna do my stem. Yes. If you really want, you could even do this sideways so your dandelion would be here and then you can have all the seeds floating off this way and then maybe do like a quote across the seeds that that's like wish. make a wish or wishing you a happy birthday and there's a homemade birthday yeah. card bam <laughs> okay i feel good about my little flying away things Feel free to play with that, you guys. This is totally your painting. This is your creation. Do whatever you want. You don't have to follow me exactly. And now we're moving on to the final step, which is just finishing details. 
because sometimes watercolor as it dries it does different things and so sometimes you have to go back make something darker or blend something or whatever so that's actually what I'm going to do on this specifically is when I blend it out the other side I kind of lost my stems you can see they kind of all are coming off the top and not the middle and I want them to be kind of coming out of the thing itself not just on the top of it so I'm just going to do some more stems here and there now it's kind of hard to continue a thin line so if you could just gotta like make up some more stems not a big deal we got a lot of fluff going on over here so it can handle more stems just kind of remember to switch that angle okay that feels a little bit better to me and then I'm actually gonna go and redo this lip so I just want it to be a little bit darker. Here. And then, because my front is looking a little bare, I'm going to do another little curved line. Ooh, I like how, I like how that blue looks. I'm actually going to go over my other ones with blue. Just give it some stronger color. <laughs> Tell me you're not singing that song in your head right now. Ah. Kevin's like, I don't even know, still know what you're talking about. Okay, so I darken that up. That looks great. I'm actually going to go in and drop in just a little bit more color. Some of these colors kind of blended out. Now, because this isn't wet, it's not going to spread which I'm gonna be fine with because I'm just kind of like dotting them in. But if you want them to spread, you can. You just need to rewet the area. So I just like hints of dark places. Maybe more over here. Okay, I think we're done, you guys, we did it. Now, because we are freehanding this, they're all gonna look so different from each other. This one even looks different from my example where my center is a little bit more poofy in this one. That's okay, that's totally normal. And it's not a big deal. And nobody's really gonna know the difference because they're not gonna see this one, they'll only see yours. So, good job. Thank you so much for painting with me. If you painted this, then post it. You can put it on Instagram or you can tag us in it. Our Instagram name is let's go make art. Same on Facebook. And we have this truly wonderful, supportive, beautiful community, uh, a Facebook group called let's make art together. You do have to ask to join it. We might ask you to tell us a joke in order to be a part of it. Might be required. <laughs> Literally the best part of my day. And, um, but just do it and you can see that we really, we cheer each other, each other on and I know it's so scary posting artwork. It's so scary, especially if you're new to it and you're a beginner, but the more you post it, the more you're putting yourself out there, you're saying, hey, I'm learning to do this, I'm creative, and that gives other people permission to be like, hey, I actually wanna try that. Um, so just do it, be brave, you can do it. Um, also, I can't wait to see how you guys are going to change this and make this your own. You guys are very creative and I appreciate all the different variations you bring to this painting. So, uh, yeah, I want to see it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, next week. Let me get the painting. <laughs>
that's all I need to say. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much for painting with me. And I'll see you for the live on Tuesday, January 8th. There's one more paint. Yes, the 8th. Okay, bye.